G'day you bloody dickheads, the vaping fucking bogan. Back once again for another Dinky Die review. How the fuck are you lot? Hope you're all doing grouse. Got ourselves a little kit from Death Wish Mods. Their new Ghost Ship 2700 Mechanical Tube Mod. Got it a little kit with the uh, Unholy V2 RDA, which has like a little matching ghost ship engraving on there. Very fucking nice. So uh, it's a, basically the similar sort of uh, tube design to their previous sort of mods. The button I don't think has changed from uh, some of the other incarnations, but this lovely fucking engraving. It's just awesome. So you've got like a ghost ship text around the bottom there, and then you've got this big crazy fucking skull Pirate ship. Very nice up the top there, little pirate fucking flag. All of that good shit. We'll see more of that in the up and bloody close. Let's take a fucking toot, shall we? I've got some coils in here from some aliens from uh, Beautiful Builds uh, over in the UK. Threw me some coils when I was at the expo. 0.11 is what they're coming in at. Let's fucking take it for a rip. Putting out just beautifully. Really quite decent flavor off this RDA as well. And uh, yeah, the airflow, I quite like it. It's quite smooth. Definitely built for the cloud chasers, this whole setup. Both the tube and the RDA are definitely built for those that like to blow big fucking plumes. But more of that in a minute before we get any further. Quick little mention of the advocacy. I know it's boring stuff, I harp on about it for every video, but it's something we all need to do as a community and that is stand up and fight for our fucking rights not to die from cancerous fucking cigarettes. And right now, the FDA in the United States is trying to completely ruin the industry. The advocacy groups over there are actually taking them to court. Fund the suit, dickheads, fund the suit. So please go down to the information in the description. I've done a video where I'm doing a giveaway um, for anybody that donates uh, to that uh, cause. There's also obviously just you can go and donate directly. So I'll put those links down there below, below and go and fucking do your, fu do your part. <laughs> Let's have a fucking beer as always, dickheads. Another brew dog, very nice. I don't think I've had this one, or if I have, it's been a while ago. Brew dog slot machine. There you go. It's a red rye IPA. There you are. Five point two percent slot machine. Stack those quarters and prepare to paint the town red. Citrus and toffee malts on the nose is rapidly followed by an interwined floral sweetness and subtle rye spiciness. Fruity notes and a little caramel sweetness ebbs to a final bitter pay out, embrace the crimson faced, one armed rye bandit and rack him up. Right, there you go. Fucking half a bloody hot novel on there. Uh, yeah, it talks about Brewdog, we've heard that before. As you know, it's brewed over in fucking Scotland, over in Ellen. Anyway, let's fucking see how she tastes. Well, there you go, dickheads. Got her sitting in my uh, punk IPA glass, brew dog glass. I picked over, picked up over in uh, fucking Camden. I think this was. Yeah, check that out. I like that end. To the bitter end, dickheads. Very nice. Anyway, friend, but plenty of fucking froth. I'm tripping over my words today. Fucking hell. I've only had one beer. I swear. <laughs> nice on the nose. Definitely smelling some of those sort of uh, spicy rye kind of flavours. Got a little bit of a hop sort of uh, smell to it as well, as you'd expect being an IPA. But definitely some sort of caramel and um, molasses kind of fragrances to it. Anyway, fucking cheers. Oh, that's nice. That's real nice. Yeah. Definitely different to your normal IPAs. There's a very sort of multi kind of caramel, woody base to this rather than a very sort of straight up herbal and citrus. Yeah. It's almost got like sort of aspects of porter and dark ale in there. As I said, the caramel, the biscuity kind of bready sort of rye notes to it. And then obviously you get that sort of hoppy herbal tone on the end there, but it's nothing too crazy. It's not super herbally. If you're more of a fucking dark beer kind of drinker, but you like an IPA every now and again, this is a nice little fucking hybrid. A bit of a mold between a dark beer and a fucking hoppy IPA. That's pretty tasty. Let's pair it up with a fucking juice, shall we? What have we got? Uh, another one from Pucker. 
Pucka Juice is one of the uh, brands I was trying over in the UK at the Expo. Really quite like this one. It's a black currant with a hint of lime. Yeah, just a little hint of lime there. Really nice black currant flavors. Should go well with this fucking uh, beer. Got some citrusy kind of fruity notes in there. We'll see how she goes. That's going pretty well. It's going pretty well. The sort of fruity uh, candy notes of the black currant going quite nicely with the sort of caramel and the sweetness that I'm getting in this beer. Yeah, that's actually quite a decent little pairing. So the sweet sort of uh, caramel toffee notes going nicely with the sweet black currant flavours. Anyway, dickheads, what we're going to do, jump down the up and bloody close. We're going to have a good squiz at the pair of these two and uh, give me final fucking pros and cons at the end. Let's have a squiz. All fucking right, Dickens. So this is the packaging your ghost ship comes in, not unlike what Death Wish have done in the past, and obviously the unholy V2 RDA. You know, again, very much the same of what we've seen before. What's inside, though? So with the mod, you'll get a little warning card about uh, mechanical mods and just some branding and stuff like that. You'll get an 18650 sleeve. You'll get a spare spring for the switch. You'll get this little tool, neat little tool you can whack on your fucking keychain, and that helps you uh, remove and install the two different contacts. So at the moment, it's got the 18650 contact installed, and then if you want to run 2700s, you need to swap out the contact with uh, this tool, and you've got this little contact here for your 2700. So I'll show you how to do that in a bit. With the RDA, you get a bag of spares, you get some spare ball bearings, which is for the clamp system, you get spare big beefy fucking grub screws, an Allen key for those grub screws, spare screws for the negative post, I believe, and some spare O-rings as well. And here she fucking is, dickheads. Ooh la, fucking la. Very, very nice. So it's a stainless steel tube and RDA, I believe, with a gunmetal finish to it. Looks kind of like an anodizing or some sort of a electro plating. Whatever they've done, it's held up. I haven't got any nicks or scratches on it, and it does look very fucking nice. I mean, just have a look at that lovely engraving on there. Beautifully done. Really, really nice. Fucking ghostly text. You've got the pirate ship with the big skull on the front of it. You get your sails and everything else. Very fucking neat looking. And then up the top there, you've got the uh, sort of Death Wish logo kind of thing going on. You've got the, uh, the dead hand rising up, the zombie fucking hand. And uh, yeah, nice Ultim drip tip. Very fucking neat. Right, so let's go through these fuckers and uh, give you the ins and bloody outs. So the tube is 26 millimeters in diameter, as is the RDA. They're matching up nice and uniform. You've got a hybrid connection up the top here. So remember, dickheads, with hybrid mechanical tube mods or any kind of hybrid mechanical mod, you do need to make sure that your pin, you see that copper bit there, make sure that is protruding. As you can see, it's sticking out past the threads. If that's not sticking out past the threads, do not fucking use it on a hybrid mech mod. Moving down the tube to the bottom area, you've got a bit of a uh, venting slot here, which is always good to see in case your fucking battery goes tits up. Uh, you've got a telescopic sort of switch design with a nice sort of rounded edge to it. So when you've got it in there, it usually sits, depending on obviously the length of your 510 on your atomizer, but it usually sits somewhere about there, just slightly recessed nice switch action to it and this sort of beveled curve edge here does make it a bit nicer when you wrap your finger around it to fire it. Uh, you've got that nice sort of crisscross design there help you give a bit of grip to get it out. You've got a serial number in there. I've got uh, lucky number 113. I was pretty fucking stoked with that. 113. Lovely stuff. Nice little fucking skull up there. The upside down fucking crucifixes. Anyway moving it on you've got the telescopic switch so that just threads out. There you go, all very nicely done on the inside there. You can see the stainless steel threading. And you've got the big beefy 18650 contact currently in there. Uh, the way the switch works, it's got a direct connection. So your battery is always gonna be making contact with this piece of uh, silver plated copper, I believe. And then when you fire the switch, there's another contact in the bottom of here that meets the bottom of this contact and voila, you have connection. So to get to that, 
I'll show you how that works, and also how you would swap out your contacts if you want to run 2700. So you just unscrew this piece here. There's that second contact I was talking about in there, and that is what gets pushed up into essentially the bottom of this fucker here. You see that? That's how the fucking switch works. Now, one thing I do need to point out is, if you screw this bottom contact all the way in, mine didn't fire. I'm not sure whether this will be the same for all of them, but on mine, if I screw this down all the way, all right, till, the, till it won't go in anymore, then put the contact back in, whether it's the 18650 contact or the 2700 contact, doesn't matter, it won't fire with this screwed in all the way. There seems to be uh, a little bit of a gap between this contact and this contact when you press this in, they don't quite meet. So what I had to do was just back out this contact, just about one turn, about that much. Um, and then it was able to make contact with both the 18650 and the 2700 contact pieces. So just a little heads up. I'm not sure if they're all going to be like that, but if your Death Wish ghost ship doesn't fire, then just wind out this contact a little bit. If you keep winding that out, and don't worry, if you wind it out, it won't unravel in there because this, this doesn't spin. You take out this contact. There you go. There's your uh, silver-plated copper contact. You got your Delrin sort of white sleeve that everything sits in. You've got the spring. I don't know whether there's any difference between these two springs. They feel pretty similar to me. Maybe this one's a little stiffer. Yeah, actually, I think this one here, they do look slightly thicker or thinner. I don't know, it might be in my head, but I feel like this one here is a little bit stiffer. I think that's what's going on. Two different tensions. Anyway, your spring doesn't carry any voltage. As you can see here, it's sitting in a nice little Delrin uh, sleeve or little Delrin fucking posi. And then you're going to drop this piece of uh, copper with the Delrin around it on top of that. So your, your contact is that square piece there and it's not making any of a circuit with the spring, which is good. You won't get any hot button issues due to the spring heating up or anything like that. So then we take, say, our 2700 contact. Oh, sorry, we take the first contact, then we're gonna put the other one in, the 2700. Screw that little fucker back in, and like I said, screw it all the way in, and then just back it out one rotation, and that should give you enough contact point for your, uh, your second piece to make a nice contact with the fucking switch. Rightio, you want that dome piece kind of pointing upwards as well. That's about it, dickheads. Uh, the system is pretty simple for the switch and uh, very easy to take apart and clean if you need to. And let's have a look at the RDA. So there you go, that's the bottom. So there's a bit of branding. You got 206 as the serial number. 26 millimeters in diameter, just like the tube. Screw that on there. You've got uh, your engravings, like I mentioned before. Very nice. You got your AFC, all right? So you've got this sort of skull crossbone design which Deathwish have been using for some time. You can close that down. It gets a little bit of a fucking odd shape to it though as you close that down. What they have done though is given you a second option of just one of the sort of uh, crosses. You haven't got the two pieces there. You've got just the one cross. You can obviously close that down a bit as well. So you can see here if we pop this open, you've got one, two, one, two. So no single coil option, but that's really not what this sort of RDA is designed for. You've got an 810 size drip tip up the top there, nice little polished Ultim, which looks good. O-ring on the inside, and uh, I've had all of my uh, custom 810 size drip tips fit in here without any dramas at all. Uh, this little one here from District 5, the one I had up top is the District 5, um, one of their one, I think it is, or one of their newer drip tips. Looks very nice with the gun metal. Bit of matchy match fucking action going on. But let's have a look at the fucking deck. Very nice, big sort of what you'd call velocity style post in that it's big sort of two post system there. What they've done though, is they've very cleverly um, done a ball bearing clamp system. All right, so you can see in there, there's a little ball bearing. And there's two ways that you can build the uh, the RDA. So like I've got here, I've got one leg going underneath the ball bearing, and then I've got the other leg on the opposing side here above the ball bearing. 
all right, being clamped by the um, the screw. So obviously the screw pushes down on this, pushes down on the ball bearing, and pushes down on the second wire. You can, if you want, put both wires underneath the ball bearing. Um, but if you've got like you know more of a, a velocity style coil, and that you've got one leg up and one leg down, well, you can just slide them, um, you know, one in the bottom and one in the top. It gives you the option. So really nice, uh, clever design there, giving people two ways of installing their coils. One thing I will point out is obviously with clamp systems, you often have the problem of gravity. You know, it pushes down on the clamp and so you've got to lift the clamp to get your wire in there. Because this is a ball bearing, it's got a curved edge. You don't need to lift the ball bearing up. You just shove your wire in there and it just pushes underneath or pushes above the, um, the ball bearing. It doesn't matter. It's really quite uh, clever using a circular or spherical fucking clamp system rather than just a plate which you gotta lift. The ball bearing allows you to slide straight in very fucking easily. Have a look at these fucking posts as well. Tell you what, four millimeter, I believe these grub screws are, I think is what the website says. So heaps of fucking torque can be applied without uh, any worries there. The other thing is they've pushed these posts in. It is quite a wide RDA. You've got a lot of deck here, but thankfully they haven't left the posts out here and given you tons of width between your two holes. They've brought them in just enough so that it means getting your average sort of width coil in there to be quite easy, but also still allowing you to drip straight through the top of your RDA and it will just run straight down between those posts and get to your coils and your wick. Shout out to Beautiful Builds over in the UK who hooked me up with these uh, nice little fucking aliens. Three times 26 gauge wrapped in 36 gauge N80 and they come in at about 0.1 ohms. Very nice. Fucking cheers bro. Juice well's only measuring about 4.6 mils in depth, so I would have liked to have seen just a little bit more height on those um, on those juice well walls because it's got a lot of space because it's quite a wide RDA, but I just feel it's quite a tall RDA. You could definitely have raised up this uh, this lip here, this well, another millimeter or two, and given us even more juice well, particularly for a sort of cloud chasing design RDA. Uh, on the bottom of the well there, you have got some branding. You got Death Wish. Mods, very nice, and uh, yeah, that's about it, dickheads. Double O-ring, you have got a lip as well. Um, if you can see down the bottom here, the little lip at the bottom of the RDA, that does help keep juice from getting onto the top of your mod, so I always like to see that. But uh, they have cleverly hidden that lip underneath the top cap, so well done, lads. Rightio, dickheads. I think that about wraps up the up and bloody close. I don't know if there's anything more I need to tell you about this fucker other than just how bloody sexy it is. Look at that shit. Very fucking tasty. Beautiful. All right, let's jump back up top. Let's give you the pros, cons, price, and everything fucking else. So there you go, dickheads. A bit of a squiz at the ghost ship and the unholy RDA version 2. As you can see, she looks fucking grouse, doesn't she? Absolutely awesome engravings on there, that uh, that ghost ship image. I was a fucking, I don't know, I'm sure every fucking boy was obsessed with pirates growing up. I certainly was. I fucking loved pirates. <laughs> I still love fucking skulls and pirate stuff. Um, so this this just is awesome. I love the fucking, the big skull fucking pirate ship there. Yeah, all of that just, just uh, gels with me very fucking nicely. But let's talk about the pros and the fucking cons of this little kit, shall we? So, uh, we'll start with the fucking RDA. The RDA's been out uh, a little while longer than the tube. Uh, obviously, you're a sort of revised version of the version one. Uh, and it's a fucking cloud chucker. You know, it's got pretty good flavor. Probably not the best flavor I've had from an RDA, um, but it's definitely good flavor for a, a side sort of airflow RDA. Certainly shitloads of airflow. When you've got that cunt wide open, oh, I tell you what, She is a fucking chucker. <laughs> um, for me, a little bit too airy all the way open, so I've just been kind of closing it off. So the airflow, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera angle like this, but that's sort of where I've been running it with it. Just sort of about two mil, about a, yeah, about a mil or two just 
to one side, kind of cutting down that airflow just a little bit. Uh, so yeah, very fucking airy, very much a cloud chaser. The deck, I like the fucking um, the clamp system they've got there with the ball bearings. It gives you options. You can put, you know, both of your uh, coil legs underneath the ball bearing and have them, you know, parallel to each other. Or you can do it kind of velocity style like I've done it where you've got ball bearing in the middle of your two leads. So you've got, uh, you know, being clamped on the top by the screw and then being pinned by the ball bearing underneath it. I like that. Gives you kind of like a velocity style setup and just like a straight clamp setup. Huge beefy posts, huge beefy fucking screws. Very fucking good for, for big builds. Loads of room as well. You know, it's 26 millimeters in diameter. You've got loads of deck space there. If you like a 3.5 uh, millimeter inner diameter, coils, you can fucking bang those cunts in there, no worries at all. So, big build deck, lots of fucking cloud chasing options there, and uh, looks pretty nice as well, I have to say that. Very fucking tasty. You can drip straight through the fucking top, the way the uh, posts are sort of situated, you've got enough room in there to kind of drip your juice and it runs straight down between the two posts. The other thing I'll point out, and not, I'm sure not everybody would notice this, but you've got a very wide deck there, you've got 26 millimeter, um, you know, total diameter, so quite a wide deck. A lot of atomizers that are quite wide end up having the posts kind of spread too wide because they, they put them near the edge of the deck and your coils end up being kind of too narrow and your legs are having to do this. What they've done here is they've brought the post sort of more central you know, about roughly the same width of most of the coils that you're going to be chucking in here. So I found coil width wise, it's slotted in really nicely. So I'm glad that they didn't just bang the posts on the outer side of the deck. They've actually kind of thought about it, brought them in a little bit. Very fucking handy. So cons wise, what do I have in the way of uh, the RDA? Um, not a fuck of a lot, but it is quite wide. So if you're gonna chuck this on other devices, 26 millimeters in diameter, not really going to fit on a lot of, you know, mods out there that are 24 and 25 millimeter sort of uh, diameters. Um, the other thing it is, the juice well could be a little deeper. It's deep enough. It's certainly got a lot of uh, width to the deck, so it holds a fair bit of juice, but I just think it's a missed opportunity. It's a reasonably tall RDA. The coils and the posts are up, you know, they've got quite a bit of height to them. I would have liked maybe just a little bit more height on that juice well in there, lift my coils up and, and get a little bit more fucking juice happening in there rather than, um, than what we've got now but not a big fucking deal. Other little thing is they didn't include a squonk pin, which just seems kind of daft to me. Obviously, it is a kit not sort of, you know, intended to be used as a squonker, but hey, people mix and match their products with their uh, with their mods. Why not include a squonk pin in there so that people could use it as a squonker? Because I'm sure it would be you know, a very adequate squonk RDA as well. So pros and cons on the tube, well, it fucking looks the tits. Again, you know, I love the design on this. You know, the switch is nothing really different, I don't think, to what they've done in the past, but great switch. Really, really nice throw on it. Good feeling, um, easy to get in and out. Looks nice, feels nice in the hand. Haven't had it sticking or anything like that on me. And it's got the contact, a constant contact system in there as well, which is quite decent. Uh, the fucking performance, very hard hitting. It's not the hardest hitting tube that I've got by any means, but it's definitely right up there with the, the cunt punches. It's, uh, it's certainly not lacking in performance. Apart from the engravings, the shape of the tube is very much a classic kind of feel, which I kind of like. You know, we've seen lots of different stuff being done recently with tubes. It's nice to have some straight, sort of simple, classic kind of, uh, you know, shape to it. And I do like that little sort of rounded off edge bit on the bottom here. It makes it much nicer getting your finger wrapped around it um, to, to fire the switch. If you have just a straight tube without any rounding on the end there, it can kind of get a little bit hard on the hand. 2700 batteries, massive pro there. It takes both the 2700s and the 18650s, so that's a big pro for me. I do really like that. Proper fucking engravings, love proper engravings. You know, it's, it's not just your laser etched bullshit. It's a proper deep cutout engravings, which is really nice. And the fact that they've matched it up with that little sort of pirate flag on the top there for the RDA. Decent little fucking matchy match logo action going on. Cons, what do I fucking have in the way of cons? Uh, not a fuck of a lot. First one for me is, why the fuck doesn't this do 21700s? Uh, it looks like it would be pretty much wide enough. You know, it, it's got the uh, the 26 millimeter diameter. You know, come on, 
21s. That's what we fucking are moving towards. Extra amperage, extra milliamp hours. Would have loved this to be a 21700, but that's a subjective con. Not everybody is going to fucking care about that. The other little con is what I mentioned in the up and close with the um, contact. I had to wind out the first contact, the one that's underneath the one your battery touches, um, to get it to make a connection. For some reason the tolerances are just off and what happens is, is you screw in the 2700 contact and it doesn't come far enough down in the Delrin threading to actually make contact with the button when you fire it. When that contact in the button is screwed all the way down, all you need to do is take out the first contact, unwind it about a, a, a about one twist, about one twist to wind it out enough or until you find it's making contact. Um, it does lengthen the throw just ever so slightly but it is a little con for me that uh, you know you can't just screw everything in tight. There's a little bit of fiddling around to get that to make uh, contact properly. So I'd love to see them fix that if they do another batch of these. Other than that, dickheads, uh, what can I really say in terms of cons? There's nothing else here. It performs fantastically. It looks the tits. It's got a lovely matching fucking uh, RDA, and it's, it's just a great vape. I've been wanting to grab this, and I've used this very, very heavily over the last couple of weeks. But what's this fucker going to set you back? Well, this one, as I said, was given to me at the Expo, I think by one of the fellas from the Reaper Squad. So fucking massive shout out to those boys and cheers, mate, for passing this one on. No, it doesn't change my opinion. I give it to you straight. As you can see, pros and bloody cons there. They're selling in the United Kingdom through uh, Elevated, uh, Elevated Evolution Vaping uh, for 170 pounds. So they're not cheap dickheads. They're definitely on the sort of sort of slightly higher end of the mech tube kits, but for an, an RDA and a mod, that's not too fucking bad, 160 pound. In the United States, you're looking at about 220, and in the United, uh, in the Canadian area, in the for the Canadians, you're looking at about 270 fucking Canadian dollars. So, doesn't matter where you get it, it is, it is a, on the pricier side of things, but it's by no means, you know, some of the higher, higher end price tags you see a lot of tube mods coming out with. And the fact you're getting a kit, I don't think it's too bad. You know, as I said, these are, you know, collectors, you know, pieces. They're not, you know, just for the cheap fucking vapor. You know, plenty of other mech kits out there, um, cheaper in the budget, but if you like something a bit more unique and different and very well made, I have to say it, uh, you know, I don't have a problem with the fucking price. <laughs> so I'll put some links in the description to a few places selling these around the world if you want to grab them. I don't think there's anybody here in Australia with them, unfortunately. Aussies, you're going to be a bit out of luck there. I'll put my usual Instagram and Facebook fucking doorbell. What cunt is ringing the doorbell? It's fucking like six o'clock at night. Who's fucking knocking on the door? If that's vape mail, I'm gonna be like, where the fuck were you earlier today? Anyway, uh, put the usual Instagram, Facebook links if you wanna check out what I'm doing outside of the fucking YouTubes. If you wanna check out uh, my support links, please fucking do. I run an independent channel, so I don't accept funding sponsorships. There's no affiliate links here, and there's no paid reviews. I wanna keep it unbiased and independent for you fuckers. So please hit my Patreon page. There's prizes and there's giveaways and there's content that you won't fucking see here. They've got a juice line down there as well. But if none of that is something Thing you can do that's all good just sit back sub on your fucking dicks off sub on your fucking tits off but above all stay off the bloody stinkies cunts i don't care how you're fucking doing it whether it's a mech tube a regulated tube a regulated box your mum's box as long as you're not banging the fucking bungers that is all that fucking matters cheers for tuning in and cheery fucking oh.